Hello and welcome to another lesson on memory and storage. Today we're going to look at types of secondary storage. So that means we're going to look at the need for secondary storage and we're also going to study some common types of storage including optical, magnetic and solid state. The piles of papers encountered by our research teams in business filing rooms. Everywhere Endless rows of filing cabinets presented the same problem, each drawer packed with records that our researchers saw needed constant updating, checking, and cross-filing. Records that were called for time and again by people needing current information. So we have to study why do we need secondary storage? Well, we should remember that your main type of primary storage, your RAM, is volatile. So any data or programs that are stored in RAM are lost when there is no power. Therefore, we need storage for programs and data for a longer term that doesn't require that constant supply of power and electricity. This is what we call secondary storage, and that's your hard disk drive, your solid state drive, CDs, DVDs, all that kind of equipment. So if we have a look over here, we can see that we need different types of storage in our computer system. So we keep our programs and data here for long-term storage. We save everything to our hard drive or SSD. And then when we double click on something to open it, it gets stored into our primary storage. So it gets moved from the secondary storage, your hard disk drive, for example, to your primary storage, which would be your RAM. And then from your RAM, for example, a program will be transferred line by line to your CPU, into the cache first, and then to the registers for that decoding and executing stage. On the other side, when we finish calculating something and we get an answer that we want, that would get stored back into your RAM. And then if you wanted to keep that for a longer time, you need then to save it into your second stor secondary storage, your hard disk drive, so that it would be there after you turn the computer off, and when you turn it back on again, you can still load in that result and use it. So secondary storage is non-volatile storage for files and programs. This requires a lot of space, so we need a low-cost, high-capacity, read-and-write, non-volatile storage medium. It needs to keep data safe, and it must be robust and reliable. If we take a moment just to compare and contrast your primary and your secondary storage, your primary storage or main memory is volatile, whereas the secondary storage is non-volatile. Primary storage can be accessed directly by the CPU, whereas secondary storage cannot be addressed directly by the CPU. Primary storage is a bit smaller. It typically has a capacity between 4 and 16 gigabytes. Whereas secondary storage, you can have hundreds of gigabytes or even many terabytes of storage relatively cheaply. There are three main types of secondary storage that we need to know about. And these are magnetic, optical, and solid state. In each category, there are many devices that make use of these technologies. If we start with magnetic storage, this uses different patterns of magnetization to store data. Examples include hard disk drives, or HDDs, magnetic tapes and cartridges, and of course the old favorite, the floppy disk. That's old and out of date now, and we don't use it anymore, but it does bring back many fond memories for me. But yeah, we don't use these anymore. The only contact most people have with the old floppy disk is just the save icon in their Microsoft Office suite of applications. So the advantages of magnetic storage are, were, well, it has a huge storage capacity. Hard disk drives can store terabytes of data, while magnetic tapes can store well over one terabyte on each one. It has the cheapest storage cost per gigabyte, and it can hold data safely for a long time. Uh, magnetic storage is typically very durable. So if you look here, we've got a couple of pictures here. So we have this. 8 terabyte hard disk drive from Seagate and I looked at the price today and that was 148 pounds for 8 terabytes. And look here we've got some magnetic cartridges that's a 30 terabyte magnetic cartridge and you can see that is only 77 pounds for 30 terabytes. Now 
that type of storage is incredibly slow. You're not going to use it on day-to-day -day life. But if you need to back up a lot of data very cheaply, that's one way that you could do it. However, there are disadvantages to magnetic storage. They can be damaged by magnetic fields. For example, airport security, x-rays, or any sort of powerful magnetic field. They're typically larger and heavier than other storage technology. They're a lot less portable. Hard disk drives also have moving parts. This means that it's slower than solid state technology. For example, your solid state drive or your memory stick. They can break or wear out over time. And they're also vulnerable to shock. For example, being dropped or shaken or moved around. So again, hard disk drives, magnetic storage are not very suitable for mobile devices such as smartphones or tablets. Moving on to optical storage. Optical storage is all about lasers. Do you expect me to talk? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. A laser beam burns tiny little pits into the disk. The higher the wavelength of the laser light, the more the data can be stored on the disk. Typical examples include your compact discs, your CDs, your DVDs, your Blu-ray discs. And the difference between these, because the discs look very similar, is just the type of laser light that's used to write to the disc. So CDs use a red laser, whereas blue lasers use a blue-violet laser that has higher frequency, and you can record more on the same surface. Optical storage is really going out of fashion. Even five years ago, almost all new laptops and desktop computers would come with a CD or DVD drive. But nowadays, most computers don't come with a drive. And the reason for that is really just the kind of the storage that they have and the cumbersome nature of using the disks really isn't suitable in our kind of modern era. So if you have a look here with the compact disk that's been around since the early 80s, 700 megabytes, not very much storage for today's needs. DVDs are a bit better, that's typically just under 5 gigabytes. But even then, if you need to store a lot of data, it's not great. Blu-ray is a bit more modern. Blu-ray capacity starts at 25 gigabytes, and in fact, you can get up to 100 gigabytes, dual-sided, dual-layer technology. But 25 gigs, it's better, but it's still not a lot if you're thinking about you're having to store terabytes of data, that's going to require hundreds of disks really quickly. It does have advantages though. The actual optical media, the disk itself, is quite small, light, and very portable. If you only need a small amount of storage, then optical storage can be considered inexpensive. What do I mean by a small amount of storage? Well, if you're dealing with CDs and DVDs, and you've just got a few hundred megabytes or a few gigabytes, buying a couple of CDs or a couple of DVDs is very inexpensive. You can probably buy them for 20 or 30p per disc, I think, um, if you go on Amazon or something like that. Uh, Blu-ray, again, if you only need to store 20, 30, 40 gigabytes, you can buy a couple of discs quite cheaply. The other big advantage of optical storage is it's not affected by magnetic fields, which can be very, da sorry, very dangerous to things like hard disk drives. However, optical storage can be scratched or broken very easily. I don't know if you have a lot of experience with optical storage. I used to use a lot of CDs and DVDs. They were always getting scratched. It was You'd always have to try and polish those scratches off to try and get that data into your computer, and it was it could be really awkward and you could lose data quite easily. Optical storage is also a lot slower in terms of read-write speeds than your hard disk drives or your solid state memory. They're also really expensive if you need to store large amounts of data, and by that I mean terabytes. If you need to store, say, two or three terabytes of data, that would just be an obscene amount of CDs and DVDs. Even Blu-ray, you would end up with a huge stack of discs very quickly. That's expensive. You need somewhere to store it. It's just difficult and awkward. Moving on to the most modern form of storage, we have what we call solid-state storage. Solid-state storage uses a technology called flash memory, which uses circuits in a similar way to RAM, but is in fact non-volatile. So it doesn't require that constant refresh of power.
So if you actually have a look at some solid state storage with the top off, so to speak, it looks very similar to a RAM chip. But of course, it's non-volatile. There are lots of different examples of solid state storage that uses flash memory. You've got your solid state drives for your desktops and your laptops. You've got these portable USB memory sticks. You've got the SD cards you might have seen for phones or digital cameras. So these are all different devices, but they're all examples of solid state. The main advantage of solid state storage is that it has no moving parts. This means it is very fast compared to other storage technology. It's a lot faster than magnetic hard disk drives, and it is orders of magnitude faster than optical storage like CDs or DVDs. It means that it's very robust. There's no moving parts to break. It is very portable because you can make it very small and light. It is also very difficult to damage. It's shock resistant and it can fit inside very small mobile devices. Solid state storage makes no noise. There's no moving parts, so it's silent. It's also very power efficient. So again, very suitable for mobile portable devices like your phone or your tablet and things like that. Main disadvantage for solid state storage is really the cost per gigabyte. It's a lot more expensive to buy an SSD than a hard disk drive, although this cost is rapidly coming down. So if you look here at the bottom, I've got an eight terabyte SSD that I just found on Amazon, and that is 720 pounds. So you can see that's a lot more expensive than an eight terabyte hard disk drive is going to be. It's gonna be a lot faster, and it's gonna be a lot smaller, but it is still quite a bit more expensive. You also have the issue that the technology behind modern solid state storage, flash memory, has a limited number of what we call erase write cycles. So there's only a limited number of time you can add data, then delete it before the drive will fail. Now the number of erase write cycles has increased greatly in the last few years. As a home user, you're unlikely to ever be affected by this. You're just simply not going to use the drive enough. Although heavy enterprise users, for example, cloud storage, so if you're like Google or Amazon or Microsoft or somebody like that, you would need to have a plan to replace all your drives eventually because they'll just run out because they're being used so much. But again, home users don't need to worry about that. So in summary, secondary storage is needed to store programs and data for a long time. There are three main types of secondary storage that we need to know about. Magnetic storage, for example, hard disk drives. Optical, such as CDs and DVDs. And your solid state storage, for example, your solid state drive or your portable USB memory stick. In the next lesson, we're going to start looking at comparing and contrasting these types of technology so that you can make a choice for which technology works better in different situations. But that will be in the next lesson. Have a good day and good luck with your studies.